So I made this video where I reviewed a bunch of Pokemon plushies and YouTube deemed it unfit for most advertisers. And like, yeah, there's a handful of adult jokes in there, but the kind of things that kids' cartoons also have because they go over kids' heads. Things like, I only wish the tree was more rigid on its back. I don't like floppy wood. Pokemon fit, as you'll see on their mini tags. Fit these nuts. But when you don't have a butt, it is hard to sit. I've tried. And even then, in my opinion, I've said way worse things in other videos that are plenty fine, and I've seen plenty of other YouTubers say significantly worse things and still be perfectly fine. I honestly could not figure out the problem until I remembered a similar thing happening to another YouTuber not too long ago, Peanut Butter Gamer. Here's his tweets on the matter, and uh, yeah! So the thing that made this plush video different from all of my other videos is I said butthole in it. But hole. Yeah, the one on Bonsly. Does it have a butthole? Yep, yeah, okay. Like, it's basic anatomy that everyone has, and that everyone with a cat or a dog sees every single day. Sometimes in your face when you wake up in the morning, Sasha. Uh, it's like that Idaho college that censors body parts in their human anatomy class for adults. Except even worse, because it's a cartoon tree-shaped rock in a show intended for kids that has advertisers of all kinds around it in the form of commercials, but heaven forbid, you know, no. I'm not so petty that I'm going to whine about this for over a paragraph, but clearly, YouTube doesn't want videos on their site that even mentions buttholes. So here's my list of the top 10 Pokemon buttholes. <laughs> and obviously this video is going to have limited ads or even be demonetized, so I am especially grateful for today's sponsor. Wanna get real sticky? Today's sponsor is Sakurako and Tokyo Treat. Each wants to send you boxes of goodies from Japan. Sugary delicacies, bountiful breads. With Sakurako, your monthly boxes include 20 traditional and artisan snacks and treats. Mm. The theme this month is especially special too. Tea time in Yokohama. They have partnered with the Kanagawa government and local businesses to bring you a truly one-of-a-kind box design. Filled with traditional Yokohama confectionaries, snacks, and teas. And each also contains a specially crafted Japanese tableware. And with Tokyo Treat, you will get up to 20 of the latest, greatest, limited edition and seasonally flavored snacks only available in Japan for a limited time. As a... Zingy chip. And Tokyo Treats theme this month? Summer Matsuri! Festival foods all around! This time I have to give the win to Tokyo Treat, all because of the Yaokin Fugashi. It's like a wheat cotton candy that they barbecued or something. Each box also comes with educational booklets too, giving you explanations of what everything included is, and even some historical and cultural tidbits. It's always a pleasant journey to Japan, all in the comfort of your own mouth. If you order your Tokyo Treat or Sakura Ko box by June 30th, you'll receive the same box I showed off here. And when you order, be sure to use the coupon code LOCKEDIN for $5 off. The link is down below. So, hey, are there even 10 Pokémon with visible buttholes? No! There's more! First of all, take the one already mentioned, Bonsly. Bonsly is a sly bonsai tree. What's so sly about it? Well, it's a FAKE bonsai tree! It's made of stone! And it's a baby Pokémon too, to Sudowoodo, who is also a fake tree. It's Pseudo-wood. Oh? But the thing about baby Pokémon is that all of them have a baby trait or two, be it screaming really loudly, playing with baby dolls, snot dribbling, diaper wearing, etc, etc. And in the case of Bonsly, it cries a lot, first of all, but fake tears to get your attention, and also to release the built-up moisture inside of itself. Uh, but also, it has a butthole. What is a baby if not an eating, crying, and pooping machine? While yes, this hole also resembles the hole in the bottom of a potted plant, you can't say that Game Freak didn't also think of it as a little butthole, now could you? You see little buttholes on anime animals all the time, and they definitely used this potted plant aspect as the perfect way to slide in a butthole reference. How sly of them! And this isn't even the only sort of artificial butthole on a Pokémon. Hisuian Electrode has one too, though that may be a non-intended coincidence, since it is an upside-down Hisuian Voltorb who has the hole on top of its head. You see, it's the hole that's on top
top of a ball of fireworks that the fuse goes into, while also being the hole that seeds come out of on a seed bomb or seed sprinkler used in guerrilla gardening. But yeah, when it evolves, now it's a butthole, and it poops out the seeds, which is actually a reference to a strategy that a lot of plants and animals use. A lot of animals can't digest certain seeds, so when they eat a plant or a fruit, they later poop out those seeds, and then the plant grows somewhere else. It's the same deal, except it's electrode. But okay, do these really count? I'd say yes, but I get it. Or yes, but I get it. So here's a more stylish, biological butthole. It's on 10% Zygarde. It's a dog, sort of a Doberman pincher with a scarf or a leash, yeah? And as any dog owner will tell you, they have buttholes. And when you take them out for a walk on a leash like this Zygarde, those dogs will often use them. And any respectable dog owner will have to pick up that duty. It's duty duty. It's their duty duty duty. However, this extremely common real life aspect that everyone use does, uh, don't don't you dare talk about it on YouTube, it's bad. Anyway, as you can see, Zygarde has this hexagon spot right on its butthole. Is it functionally a butthole though? No, just stylistically one. Zygarde is made up of many of these large cells and they combine to form different forms, but you know that the designers put this spot specifically right here on purpose. You don't accidentally do that, especially as, again, plenty of anime cats and dogs get little stylized buttholes in their design because it's basic anatomy that everyone sees on cats and dogs. And Zygarde here, make sure you see it because sometimes it glows. Hilarity. Just like Skunky, it's hilarious. Skunky and Skuntank are skunks, which famously shoot super smelly liquid from their butts to deter predators. And I mean, listen to their original cries. That's a fart sound effect. These Pokemon are walking fart jokes, but of course, giving them an actual butthole would be too much since they are already all about stinky butt stuff. So, Skuntank shoots its poison stink from the end of its tail, which it keeps in front of it, firing like the gun of a tank. But that didn't stop Gang Freak from giving them butt faces. How cheeky. Their faces, especially Stunky's, resembles a human butt. And because of this, doesn't this mean Stunky's mouth resembles a butthole? I'd say so. Enough with the jokes already! Show me a real, biologically functioning Pokémon butthole! You say? You weirdo. God, imagine being this obsessed over Pokemon buttholes. What is wrong with you? Uh, but all right, fine, after one more. It's Wizmer and Loudred, two sort of generic monster Pokemon that are all about sound. Wizmer is a whisper, and it likes to keep quiet, most of the time anyway. And Loudred is a loud boombox Pokemon. The symbols on their backs show how strong their Wi-Fi signal, I mean, it shows their volume. And that little hole on their bottoms, what's with that? It looks like a butthole. And that's the joke that loads of folks make all the time. And maybe, just maybe, that was intentional. It is a hole on their butt, conveniently placed. But more realistically, it probably resembles a headphone jack. I mean, it's right next to that volume symbol, and it's a boombox. You know, those 1980s, 90s sound machines that still used that outdated audio port. And now, all right, fine, here we go with the real ones. Male Torchic has a little butthole. I mean, look at that. Why is there a single black pixel here? And why only on the male? Well, because women don't poop. Everybody Everybody knows that. But actually, it's because of vent sexing. When chicks are born, you have to separate the males from the females, but you cannot so obviously tell when they are just a chick, as they haven't developed their sexual dimorphism yet. For some western breeds of chicken, you can easily check the length of certain wing feathers, but for certain eastern breeds, it's not so simple. And so, the method that was developed in Japan involves squeezing feces out of the chick to open up its cloaca, a bird's equivalent to a butthole, and genitals, a two-for-one special. But obviously, this makes sexing them easier. The males have a big bump inside of their cloacas. So, uh, male Torchic gets this one dark pixel on its butt. Butt Torchic. Uh, I mean, but Torchic isn't the only bird with a butt. There's also Oricorio, who has four forms based on different styles of dance, as plenty of birds are known to dance to attract a mate. And each form can be found on different islands, which is a reference to Darwin's finches on the Galapagos Islands, showing how evolution works. The finches on different islands had different beaks and shapes to better suit the environment environment of their particular island. But finches are not the only birds to do that. There's also the Hawaiian honey creeper. Fitting, as Alola is based on Hawaii, and also these birds look like the different oricorios. I mean, look at that. But anyway, you won't be finding 
buttholes or cloacas on Oricorio in the games. For that, we have to see the anime. And only one episode at that. The episode titled Lily's Exhilarating Challenge features a pom-pom style Oricorio owned by Hobbs, Lily's butler. And in this one scene, we see a little X for a butthole, because again, this is very, very common as a stylized butthole in anime. Even anime intended to be suitable for seven-year-olds. And the Pokemon Adventures manga did the same thing too, though admittedly it was censored in the Western release. Ruby and Sapphire got hold of a seemingly ill Zigzagoon and are wondering what's wrong with it. And being the Pokemon expert that she is, Sapphire puts her nose right up against Zigzagoon's tiny little X marks the spot butthole to get a whiff of its glands. She still does this in the western version, but the X butthole is gone, and Ruby isn't freaking out as much, nor is the Zigzagoon. Uh, this isn't just some crude joke though, it's a real method some veterinarians use to detect health problems in animals, dogs especially, by smelling them. Especially their scent glands, which tend to be right around the anus, the butthole. <laughs> Granted, this method has fallen out of fashion since we have better tools now, but Sapphire doesn't have those tools on her, now does she? She. And this is also a part of why dogs smell each other's butts. They can learn a lot about each other that way, including their health. And this is all very fitting, as Zigzagoon is primarily based on the raccoon dog. Now number two, maybe this is a little cheaty, but uh, Pukamuku. Like, it's literally just an anus. That's what a sea cucumber is, an anus that slithers across the ocean floor. I mean, look at this article headline. Sea cucumbers pinch out five Eiffel Towers worth of poop per reef per year. Like, wow and its guts out ability? Yeah, some sea cucumbers will rapidly poop out their own respiratory organs to scare or distract would-be predators. Thankfully, the ones it pushes out too hard and detach will grow back, but still, the animal kingdom is weird. But, of course, this means that this star shape, which is also a common stylized animal butthole design, is intended to be Pukumuku's butthole. And before I scare you off with number one, here's a few honorable mentions. It's Clubopus. Yeah, that's a hole in the middle of its bottom, but it's isn't that just its mouth? That's where octopus mouths are. And, well, that's correct. But also. No, no, really. But also. It's, 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 it's but also. Octopuses poop with their mouth. Or do they eat with their butt? Which is worse? Uh, well, so do jellyfish. So arguably, Jellicent and Frillish's mouths are their butts too, but they aren't properly placed. And we know that they eat by just absorbing things through their ghostly skin, so maybe not. But Mega Venusaur has this pink flower resembling a gaping butthole. Plenty of people say Rog and Rolla looks like a walking butthole, but really that's just a speaker ear. And uh, Meowth in the anime at one point has to put an X of band-aids on his butt, the poor guy, though we never see it. Um, but Gigantamax Garboder, oh man. Gigantamax Garboder seems to be into toys because it's using a train as a- All right, okay, moving on to number one, it's Pikachu. Pikachu? Really? They do that to their mascot? Like I totally get putting a butthole on a joke Pokemon because haha -ha, crude humor. I understand putting a butthole on a dog or a cat because like they, they are little buttholes but also you see their little buttholes all the time. I understand Pokemon based on sea creatures that have something interesting about their butts having buttholes. And even as a joke aspect of a baby Pokemon. That all makes perfect sense but Pikachu. But Pikachu! Together! And also, it's the most well-defined and biologically functional butthole out of all of them. <laughs> what? Okay, where, where and when was this? Okay, the 90s. Okay, that makes sense. Pokemon was still new and experimental, and that was also when, like, gross-out humor was at its peak popularity the world over. So that makes sense. So where was it? Ah, the Pokemon Pocket Monsters manga. Oh. Oh. That Pocket Monsters manga. Uh, for those who don't know, there's this mostly Japan-exclusive Pokemon Pocket Monsters manga that is all over-the-top crude humor. It's about Red and his potty-mouthed talking Clefairy, and he later gets a Pikachu when they realized Pikachu was going to be the mascot of the franchise instead of Clefairy. Video about that here. But anyway, there's quite a lot of toilet humor here, and um, even balls. Completely, totally uncensored balls. Ash, or I guess Red. How is he doing that? Uh, Japan in the 90s, everybody. 
I say, as if this manga series isn't still ongoing, but it, it is it is a bit less over the top these days, though. Anyway, uh, here's Clefairy trying to light its fart on fire with Charmander's tail. Where were we? Pikachu butthole, right. As far as I can tell, there's a chapter about Pikachu needing to take a massive dump, and he does. However, Pikachu, this isn't the time to be doing something like this, Clef! And so he doesn't get to finish. But uh, later, there's some pooping with the help of Clefairy squeezing Pikachu over a river. And this time, uh, you get to see that, that, that puckering sphincter open as wide as it can. It has, like, lips. <sighs> this is in a manga intended for, like, kids and teens. But I can't utter the word butthole in the context of a plush of a fake tree from fictional media intended for seven-year-olds. You know, the worst part of this is that after whining about all this on Twitter, at first I got the generic auto-reply that YouTube sends everyone on Twitter, but later, later they actually emailed me. I was informed that you are asking for specific guidance and specific lists of words and contexts to avoid so your videos won't get limited monetization in the future. That's true. As much as I would like to provide specific information that will ensure that your videos will be eligible for full monetization, we will not be able to do that. I'm unable to offer for editorial advice on videos. As a creator, it is also your responsibility to check your contents and make sure that videos are aligned with our guidelines and policies, which are incredibly vague, and also don't mention the word butthole. I understand that you believe the guidelines are of no help, but these help centers are your best reference for when it comes to monetizing your contents. For more details, you can review our advertiser-friendly content guidelines and AdSense program policies, but those, of course, are just as vague, and don't mention the word butthole. I get your point when you mention that there are music videos that you think get away with explicit descriptions. I was of course referring to music videos that like talk in-depth details about sex and drugs and stuff, and it's like way like, how is this allowed to be monetized? Like that's one step away from softcore porn, but okay. Sometimes videos that may otherwise violate our community guidelines may be allowed to stay on YouTube if the content offers a compelling reason with visible context for viewers. We often refer to this exception as EDSA, which stands for Educational Documentary Scientific or Artistic. Um, excuse me, are you saying my review of Pokemon plushies with several attempts at comedy throughout it isn't art? because I agree with you, but also rude. Look at this face and tell me that again. This poor sad dude. I'll be sure to include some half-naked twerking while singing about cocaine next time. You got the nose wrong. <laughs> now it's hard. So hey, what buttholes did I miss? Gary doesn't count, we're being literal here. And also, I'm not sure with like Monferno. Like, is that a butt? It's a baboon butt, so yeah, it's a butt, but it goes all the way around the tail. I swear, it's... So Chimchar doesn't have a tail, and then Infernape does. When Chimchar evolves, does a part of its intestines invert and pop out to form this tail? 